polarizer that was blended with the uh, 3 16 black prunes. So you could take the uh, Omni light and bounce it into the umbrella. I want you to bounce it against a video wall. Village. Bounce I can it operate the on the monitor core. or I can operate off the screen. And so but it's you very have interchangeable. The and, freedom you know, to shoot 570 degrees around, not even moving your feet. And throughout this range, exposed to the, uh, the film business at a really early age. My, uh, when I was about eight years old, my dad was filming the, uh, he was a camera operator on the Patty Duke show in New York. Uh, they did the show for one season there because I think the child labor laws were easier and Patty Duke was only 16 at the time so she was able to put in an eight hour day. Uh, whereas if they had done it in LA, she could have only done a four hour day. So uh, my dad was uh, willing to let me play hooky from elementary school and and hang out on his set. And then I even got a chance to stand in for, there was an actor who played her brother and I, I think I stood in for him a couple of times. Uh, and I have to say that when I was in my teens, I, I'd watch my dad shape the light in the room and all that, but I don't know if I quite perceived what he was doing. I got the idea that he was either trying to emulate daylight or shape someone's face so they looked their best. But I think it took a little while. It took a few years in college and a, and a couple more years of uh, really being a lighting camera person to get that um, internal instinctual uh, sensibility of how to sculpt someone's face or how to create a mood or how to create a look. I was fascinated by being able to recreate nature, so I thought the cinematographer had a very powerful role in, in uh, filmmaking in that they could evoke and create any mood whether it was there to begin with or not. Uh, and maybe one of the toughest things is to uh, perhaps was to scout a location with a director and you happen to be there at the right time of day in the room where the space looks gorgeous and you're trying to go why does it look so good and knowing that the sun will only last a few minutes that way or maybe an hour and that if you've got to do a six hour scene it's your job as the camera person to go all right how do I recreate the light that God put in the room and make it last for 12 hours because it's going to take us that long to do a scene and I thought it was fascinating you know that you could just sort of recreate nature and then control it and uh, I thought that was great. Uh, I think directing is interesting too, but I was, um, I've always been fascinated by that um, ability to control the physical, visual look of, uh, of a scene. The film, the film stocks are so sharp and the lenses are so sharp that um, I find myself needing a certain amount of diffusion. Um, and in the last couple of years, I've used uh, the Tiffin Glimmer Glass quite a bit. I've used the, uh, the Tiffin bronze glimmer glass as a way of warming the image a, a tiny bit, as opposed to hanging a lot of gels all over all the lights so I can warm the scene just a little bit and bake in a, a look. Because I know I can add some warmth also in post, but I sort of like baking it in to the, uh, into the image, whether I'm shooting digital or, or, or film. I usually stay fairly subtle, but sometimes I think all you need is a little bit of subtle control. And, uh, and it helps me make these, these folks look better. Um, I'll do additional things in post, but by creating a certain uh, look that's baked into the, uh, the initial image, uh, when I start doing additional things in post, you don't feel it as much. It's all, it all blends together. And um, I've used the, uh, the polarizers quite a bit, especially now with, uh, with digital cinematography as well, where what I've discovered with a lot of the digital cameras, since they, they have a hard time with uh, um, the highlight aspect of the image, so if we're outdoors and uh, actors are starting to perspire a little bit and they're getting a little shiny, um, you can't always get the makeup people in constantly for, for controlling uh, that shine. So sometimes uh, what I'll do is I'll use the polarizing filter. I can actually take shine out of their skin uh, with the polarizing filter. And Tiffin was really nice on uh, Desperate Housewives. I was trying to use a combination of the polarizer and uh, and a, like a light pro mist. And outdoors, sometimes you get into a problem when you stack two filters, you'll get a little reflection and we were getting that problem. So uh, Tiffin was really nice about blending a filter for me. I wanted to blend in uh, something less than their eighth, uh, something between the eighth black pro mist and the quarter black pro mist. So they made me a 3 16 custom uh, filtration in, in the black pro mist uh, quality and they blended it into a polarizer. 
So this way I had one filter, got rid of the reflection issues. I had a little bit of diffusion that uh, helped my scene. And then I had the advantages of the polarizer, uh, which we use all the time. So it, that was great. I mean, they were really responsive to a cinematographer's need. And I thought that was really creative on their part. I wasn't sure if someone would, if a company would do a blend or a, a variation of, uh, of this, the various strengths filter. I didn't know whether they, they were locked in, in in terms of a manufacturing process to making it only one way. And they proved uh, they could pretty much do whatever we wanted. So that was really a terrific, uh, terrific help for us in production. If you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money, but you want you want sort of basic tools in your kit. I think the, I think the polarizer is a basic tool because if you're going to do any exterior work at all, it's going to give you control uh, of, uh, of the exterior photography that you do. It's going to allow you to control uh, how blue a sky is, how green the trees are. It's going to get rid of glare off of, uh, off of windshields in cars. I mean, that's a big tool where, you know, like I was shooting a cop show last season and we were constantly shooting through windshields uh, to the two actors talking. And there are times when there's the fastest way to get rid of the uh, reflection of the sky in the windshield so you can see, see the actors is to use the polarizing filter. So that's an incredibly good tool. And what's nice is you can, with the polarizer, you can vary it too. If you want to leave, a, let's say you like some of the cloud pattern that's reflecting in the windshield, so you don't want the windshield to be dead clear, totally clear, then it starts looking like a studio shot. But with the polarizer, you could eliminate quite a bit of the glare, leave a little bit in so you feel the environment around, around the actors, uh, but you make, the, uh, you make the windshield clear enough that you can at least see the, who's talking. And you're, you're just going to find a million uses for it. Uh, for someone who's starting out and just doing small projects, um, I, I have to say the polarizer is probably one of the most adva uh, uh, adva advantageous tools you could, you could have in your kit. To, to shooting, people want to look good. You know, they, your your client, if it's the bar mitzvah boy or the parents or uh, or a, wet, a couple that's getting married, they want to look glamorous. I mean, everybody knows what glamour looks like. Uh, Americans are so exposed to high-end advertising. So even as an amateur, uh, you want to become sensitive to how people look, and um, a little bit of diffusion might help. You know, r real people have not the greatest skin or they don't do great makeup. So you might want to think about some of the diffusion filters to help take away a little bit of the blemishes that are going to be found on real people. Uh, you might want to warm up the scene a little bit. Uh, if you're not going to get into heavy duty editing and color, con color correction, which we do in professional post-production, maybe you want to build a warmer look into uh, into your video or your or your still photography using uh, we use these uh, coral filters. I'll use quarter or half coral filters. Um, Tiffin has a whole load of warming filters that might help you make a scene look a little more romantic and warmer, more charming. Uh, and those are things to think about. Uh, but I th I think and then I bring I go back to the polarizing filter again too because uh, it just lets you enhance nature a little bit. And so even even if you're an amateur, all these these tools are easy to experiment with. And I think it's, it, it's easy to see the effects that they give you, and then you just have to decide how much is too much. Are you overdoing it? Uh, but you should experiment. And uh, to, the, to the camera maker's credit, they're trying to make cameras that, that emulate the film look, but I think they have a ways to go, and it's going to be a little while before they hit it. And so until they do, we're going to need uh, filtration tools that help us uh, control what digital the image that digital cameras produce.